If you want to know how tough a car's engine is, one way to find out is to try flogging it to death, or in more technical terms, testing it to destruction. Before presenting their cars to the public, the British Motor Corporation decided to do just that, and you're invited to come along with us and see how it worked. Right now, you're inside an Austin A50, traveling along a German autobahn. The autobahn was chosen for the test because it is one of the few road systems in Europe where the BMC team could carry out the tremendous task they'd been set of driving normal family saloons for 20,000 miles in a few weeks at an average speed of over a mile a minute. What was the idea of this grueling trial? For one thing, the compression ratio of all BMC engines has been raised to a standard of 8.3 to 1. For another, BMC have increased the engine size of the Morris Minor and of her sister from the Austin stable, the A35, from 803 to 950 cc. Before putting the new engines in service, BMC had to be certain that their big end bearings would stand up to the greatest demand they could be asked to meet, the terrific strain of the continental type of autobahn motoring. So it was decided to test the indium bearings to destruction, or thereabouts, which at this kind of pace might reasonably be expected to happen around the 20,000 miles mark. The Morris Oxford completed the quartet under trial. Like the Austin A50, it has a 1,489cc engine. And of course, like all the others, it has the new compression ratio of 8.3 to 1 to give more power in the driver's pocket. That is, livelier acceleration through the gears, and because the engine is thermally more efficient, lower petrol consumption through the same speed range. The same fuel is used on all four models, a well-known premium grade petrol of 84 octane rating. Consumption proves to be 36 to 40 miles per gallon for the 950cc engines and 25 to 28 for the 1489cc types. The drivers work in two shifts, totaling 600 to 800 miles a day for each vehicle. Quite a strain on the men as well as the cars. The test routes are the Stuttgart to Munich Autobahn, a return journey of 260 miles, which is frequently covered by the whole team in as little as four hours, 10 minutes, and the shorter Stuttgart to Heilbronn leg. Speeds above the 60 mile an hour average, of course, are only logged during the actual time spent on the Autobahn. In each shift, there is only a 10 minute break for refueling and for the thoroughly well-earned cup of tea. To make the tests completely fair, no more than the normal fuel, oil, water and tyre pressure checks are made during the run. The cars have to wait for each Sunday morning for their routine service and maintenance. Although these few weeks are the equivalent of three to four years really hard driving by a fast motorist, there is no Grand Prix treatment for them, only the handbook servicing they could expect from the ordinary conscientious owner-driver. This is primarily an engine trial, but it also tests practically every component of the vehicle. For apart from anything else, anyone who has driven on the Autobahn knows that it's not exactly as smooth as a billiard table, and it carries a heavy volume of traffic. So the trial goes on, regardless of weather conditions or traffic density. The morning shift starts at 5.30 a.m. and the team of cars keep moving through everything from torrential rain to blistering heat. Later on, the shifts are stepped up from two to three a day and still not one of the hard-worked engines shows any sign of trouble.
17,000, 18,000, 19,000. Surely this is more than any engine can be reasonably asked to stand. Pottering around town, yes. Normal day-to-day -day traveling, yes. But over 60 miles an hour, six or 800 miles a day, six days a week, well, really, something must give soon. Experts are satisfied. There's no sign of trouble yet. No disturbing rumbles. Performance as lively as ever. So once again, the fleet is on its way. If an engine does start to feel the strain, the signs will be noticed at once. For in addition to the normal readings, special instruments have been fitted to show oil and water temperature and axle and under bonnet temperature as well. Not to mention the inlet and outlet pressure from the new full flow filter, which is under test at the same time. Any departure from normal will be obvious at once from the fascia panel. But as the cars pull into Stuttgart on the vital day, with the scheduled 20,000 miles on the clock at last, every one of them is still going strong. The bearings were supposed to be tested to destruction, but it seems that destruction is still quite a long way off. experts are going to be faced with a decision, for the drivers have a proposal to make. They've done their 20,000 miles, but the cars are running so smoothly, how about adding another 5,000 to see if they can take that too? Fair enough, the experts agree. So after a wash and brush up, it's back to the Autobahn to add 25% to what was already supposed to be a destruction test. So it goes on for mile after mile. And as they reach their new target of 25,000 miles, every one of the engines comes through the grueling test with flying colors, convincing proof of the high endurance factor that can in future be accepted as normal for the 950cc and 1,489cc British Motor Corporation cars. Tests like these are not only a vindication of the designer's skill, but also one more example of the thoroughness with which the BMC test their cars before handing them over to the public. A thoroughness which inspires confidence.